Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this map look video of the Calmston Farm map by Oxygen David here in Farming Simulator 22. This is a newly released map available on the in-game mod hub to download and um, yeah let's hop in and take a quick look at Calmston Farm which is a UK themed map. Here we are loaded in now i have already loaded into this map once and i actually started playing on it so i've already kind of had a little bit of a look myself so i've actually started playing around and doing a few things but we have got a starting farm and as you can see from the buildings very very uk uk themed indeed A quick hop over all the fences and have a look round. Um, first thing out of the gate I could tell you about, we have collectibles on the map, as you can see. We have the Elm Cleek collectibles here, so you can run round and find all 100 of those, if you are so inclined. Um, and that will obviously get you a cool bit of money for your game. Now, obviously, I'm loaded up in New Farmer here, which means the map is exactly as oxygen david intends people kind of to look and play it um i am aware that if you load it up in farm manager or start from scratch modes a couple of things go a little bit weird and i'll talk about that a little bit later in the video as we're going round. i'm just having a bit of a wander on foot actually oh more collectibles look cheap Might as well pick them up. <laughs> so yeah, you can have a wander around, find your collectibles. Now, as you can see over here, we've got an animal pen. Built into the map. Big animal pen. We've also got a, a, a lady out for a morning stroll. But yeah, it's a, it's a lovely looking map. And it definitely feels... Again, with the colours and the, the, the shaders and the textures that Oxygen David's done, definitely feels very UK-ish. There's the uh, gate opening. And we come into this lovely field area. Like I say, great big pasture here for storing and putting animals in. Also, obviously, doubles up as a grass field. So that we can... Um, mow it and get all the grass and stuff over here we have a water trough so you do have to supply water and obviously food we go over here here's your animal trigger this will obviously let you buy and import your animals which in this case is sheep so this is the basically the sheep pasture this is your sheep field, so you can have loads of sheeps running around on it, all natural looking. And everyone can have a good time. Go through this paddock here. Love the gates. Love the gates. Got a show jumping course. This must be the equestrian area for the horses. over here and there's your horses you can have eight eight horses in your stable again little areas little latchy gate sounds little looks like somebody's little allotment here where they're uh, making and growing their own stuff. Tennis court? Wow. That net is quite big. Is it tennis or volleyball? <laughs> well, I'm not entirely sure. Or collectibles. Oh, there's loads over here. Hey! 
money, money, money. But there are some very interesting ways you can get money on this map. Into this area here. There's this little swimming pool. Pond. Whatever it is. If it's a swimming pool, it looks like it's got a bit of algae in it. Do with the filters cleaning. Yeah, more collectibles. Definitely worth having a quick run around the map for that purpose before you start jumping into your your serious playing. You've got this whole little area. So down here. Got your, your decorations and everything. Um, I will show you a little trick you can do on the map. Let's have a look at the map screen. So here's your map. Okay. You'll notice quite a lot of decent sized fields on it for a start. A um, few grass ones. And you can see I've actually been playing around already on the map. Started doing a bit of harvesting last night as I was looking at the map as I got to the end of a live stream. But yeah, very UK sort of map. Uh, big f positive for me, straight out the gate, no square and rectangle fields. <laughs> All the fields are natural, proper fields. I love that. Wish more maps had proper fields, proper field shapes. Now, one of the things you obviously will need to expect from this map is that because it's kind of focused on a, a, a UK farm, you're not going to have hundreds of millions of cell points all around the map. You're not going to have a big, bustling, vibrant town. And it's pretty much designed farming. You know, you're coming in, the whole map is dedicated to farming. If you like playing farming sim and you like it running running your farm, fantastic. But if you kind of are looking for like, oh, I need to have the big, big um, the big sort of the the town structure. We need to have all the hundreds of millions of cell points, all the production stuff and all that. Probably not going to be giving you that. Um, because like I say, it is focused on a, a an area of. The UK, or modelled on a an area of the UK. It's not. I don't think this is a real farm, okay? But it's it's obviously styled to look like you would expect to find a UK farm. And for those of you outside of the UK watching this video, we don't tend to have a lot of towns and cities in a, in in the middle of our farms, and we don't tend to have you know hundreds of cell points located around our farms here in the UK. We probably have, you know, most of the farmers in the UK probably only have one or two places near them for, you know, delivering all their, their goods to, you know, their, their, their merchants. But here we have the farm. This is the main sort of starting farm. You've got your, you've got your um, sprayer here. You've got a front weight over here. Got a roller. John Deere 6R, you, you get two 6Rs in your starting fleet. One of mine is already out with a trailer. Uh, you also get a Fent tractor, which I've got currently on my lovely little header trailer over here. For my combine, which is a class Convio 720, or Tryon, sorry, 720. Um, so yes, I, I've obviously been out here and I've been doing a little bit of harvesting last night just to have a bit of a play on the map and get a feel for it so let's jump in the tractor because obviously i've got a bit of um a bit of barley harvested and i need to go and deposit it now in my silo so let me just quick spin round take you to the silo i should also show you inside some of the buildings in a minute but obviously our silo is here and there's the unloading point for the silo. If you want to find the tip silo, I found I had to come through here 
onto this main road. I then had to open up this shed here. And then the unloading point, which is a real test for me, because I'm not very good at reversing trailers, <laughs> is located in this shed here. Got to back your trailer into here. And that's your unloading point. That's your silo. Okay. You've then got a bulk area here. I assume this is for tipping like your sugar beets, um, potatoes, stuff like that. Buildings do have light switches. All very nice. Like I say, we do get we do get doors, roller doors. I would have liked, just maybe, just maybe for me, this door to have been a little bit wider, just so you know the the actual silo is a little bit more accessible. Um, again, in here we've got another bulk dumping tipping area as well as our repair trigger, our workshop trigger. So we can bring all our vehicles in here and get them repaired. Um, I do notice on a couple of these, the sheds, the, um, the clearance on the doors is a little bit lacking. So certainly for some equipment, you might struggle to get it inside buildings. So you might have to use the open sheds. This was one building around here, the one here. Because this is where the combine was parked. And getting the combine... Through that little entryway was a little bit tricky. But eventually it did come out. I probably won't park it back in here. I'll probably just use this for other things. But we've got our cultivator in here. We've got our cedar. We've got our baler. Got all our starting equipment in here. And again, you've got just normal undercover sheds that you can park stuff in. If we go and have a look at the starting fleet of equipment, like I say, you get two John D6Rs and a Fence 714. So nothing massive. Um, harvester, you know, you've got a nice little little harvester in the Class Tryon 720. Like so. You do start with a telehandler, which is a nice JCB telehandler, I guess, for dealing with all the, which also has um, support for pallets. There's a pallet fork. A bale fork and a bucket. And with that, you've got your little trailer. Which holds 12,100 litres. Nothing massive there. Combine header. Little 10 metre header. Not bad. Cultivator. Is a 6 metre cultivator. That's probably pushing the limits as far as what tractors you've got. Cedar again, so you're probably not going to be push, pulling the, the either of those with your fence 714. Power roller, yeah, your seven, you know, your fence could probably do the rolling. But your sprayer again, fence probably very useful for doing the spraying if it's got narrow wheels. You've got a mower, got your baler, got your telehandler tools, like I mentioned, you've got your header trailer. And you've got your front weight. Just one weight. So you've got three tractors. They all have to share a weight. <laughs> if we look at the map. We start out with a few fields. That are owned. So we've got a barley field here. Which is the one I'm currently harvesting. We've got a wheat field. We've got a couple of grass fields. And obviously we've got the animal areas. We've got Strangely we don't own the little show jumping area. But we do own all the area around the outside of the map, the periphery and stuff, and a lot of the like internal road systems and stuff we own. Uh, we also, on this map, start out owning the BGA. <clears throat> and I'm guessing because, as I found out last weekend when I was helping a, a map maker with map testing trying to have uh the bga as a contract delivery point a delivery point for contracts was a bit of a problem because unless you owned the bga 
you couldn't actually tip anything there. So the contract system wouldn't work. The mission system wouldn't work in the game. So you have to start with the BGA owned. Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Um, as you can see, there are contracts on the map. Is very good. A lot of spraying contracts pay nice money too. Look, 26 grand, 25 grand, 32 grand. Lots of good money, actually. Very good money. But yes, very nice looking map. Uh, I'm assuming this is your BJ down here. We hop down. Visit the BGA, nice big area. Fully loaded up. Again, collectibles down here. Look, there's another sheeps. Collectibles again. Oh, look at all the collectibles. I do like, do like the collectible hunt. It's nice to see that back in FS22. Although it'd be interesting to see if any mod makers, map makers come out with their own collectibles rather than just reusing the the Elm Creek, Out Baileron and Erlengrat collectibles. Whether they put their own custom, custom collectibles into a map. Horses. Have a look in the... Uh, Hose pipes and stuff. But yes, here's the BGA. Nice big area. So. Debris crushers on the other side. Bit of a trip round to that. Right, how to get out of this place. Ah, here's the road. And then we go around the back. That should take us down to this area down here. We just got Hotswold stores. The Cotswolds. Oh, tell you what. Interesting, the old Cotswolds. If that's the location that this is geography set on, that's giving me ideas, you know. Because that. One thing I will say about this map the first time I looked at it, first time I opened it up in the screen here, I thought to myself, it's got a bit of a um, got a bit of a Clarkson's Farm vibe to it, and a lot of people from outside the UK probably have no idea what Clarkson's Farm is. It's a it's a show on Amazon Prime. Um, it's on Amazon Prime. It's ho it's about Jeremy Clarkson, the guy who for many years presented and was one of the. The, the three hosts of Top Gear, a UK sort of car show, entertainment show that ran for many years on the BBC before they eventually got fired for um, their, um, let's say, not politically correct views on some things and some subjects. And um, they ended up then striking a huge deal with Amazon where they went off and produced a similar show for Amazon. And now Clarkson actually has a farming show. And um, he lives on a farm here in the UK and has done for many, many years. And he's always had somebody basically, basically farming his farm for him, farming the land and everything. That person retired. And he decided, you know what, I'm going to have a go at it myself. And proceeded to obviously be followed around by the Amazon film team. <laughs> Um, and yeah, this map gives me that kind of that kind of vibe and feeling that it's. Um, I mean, I, I don't think we're ever ever going to get a true 
Clarkson's Farm replica in farming sim, you know. Be great if some mod maker or map maker did come out with an accurate, you know, scale, you know, version of Clarkson's Farm. But for those of you that want to pretend and role play in the meantime, I think this far, this map will let you do that very, very well. So yeah, lots of um, cell points here. Um, got your bales, pallets, tipping points, got your stone. Debris Crusher. All good stuff. All very good stuff. So that was down there. Over here. Got the animal dealer. Farmer's market. Bale sell point. So again, come down to the animal dealer. We'll have a quick trip over here. As you can see. Come and buy your animals. Again, plenty of collectibles down, hidden down here as well for the people that want to. Uh, oh, I've already got 22. And they, they're not exactly hidden, are they? You will have to you have to say they're not exactly. You're not having to parkour your way up the side of buildings or anything like that. Find them. They kind of just sat there. Dirt the pit there, lot. Got more collectibles over here. Lovely map, lovely map. Wall, collectible. So yeah, quite. I'm really, really like get, liking the vibe and feel of it. Feels definitely, like I say, for the part of the UK that I live in, this is like um, so accurate, so like what I see when I'm travelling about. When I'm traveling across the county and that, this is kind of what I see everywhere. More collectibles. Yeah, this definitely is kind of, certainly for my part of the UK, very, very visually accurate. Go and have a look at a few more bits. Over here in the top left corner, we've got the garden center and the lime station. Again, you've got garden stage station. Oh, let's go. Trailer. Again, you can come up here, buy your lime. Please wear a face mask. Thank you. Yes, very important, people. Make sure you wear your face masks. Make sure you wear, wear your face mask, people. That's going to be something that, unfortunately, despite what people are saying in the media it's probably going to be a thing that's going to be a a permanent permanent sort of thing now for a lot of people wearing it because unfortunately the um the uh, 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 uh virus thing isn't ever going to go away apparently apparently it's going to be like um it's going to end up becoming very similar to the the common cold and and flu in that it's always going to be here we're always going to be living with it people are always going to catch it eventually over time people will build up uh, an immunity to it and therefore it will have less of an effect on them when they do get it they will be be less less sick you know because you no know, that's the way things work but unfortunately, it does mean that for a lot of lot a lot of people now, you're gonna have to get used to the fact you're gonna have to wear masks when you're out in public because you're never you're never gonna be truly safe and protected from it. Even if you've been jibby jabbed and you've had your jabs and stuff, it's not gonna stop you getting it, and it's certainly not gonna stop you transmitting it. So yes. Very common sight, those wear your mask signs. Again, if you're in the UK, you will be fully aware of how important it is to wear your masks when out in public places and when outside lovely map I keep saying lovely map it is a lovely lovely map 
love the latching sound on the gates. Run over this way. Where am I? Over here somewhere. I should have gone up here. General store. Located at the top of the map. little restaurant area that reminds me of a like a little garden center place here in my hometown which has like a it's a like a garden center with a bit of a restaurant area attached to it normally full of old people old people have bus trips to the restaurant so from about 10 o'clock in the morning you can't get in the restaurant at the garden center if you ever go to the garden center i'm not one for going to the garden center it, bores me i don't do gardening um <laughs> in real life at all um yeah can't get in it because of pe all the old people yeah more collectibles look oh, found 34 sawmill sawmill up here at the top of the map now you can sell your wood and your wood chips not a massive amount of logging I would say is done typically on UK farms but if you want to do trees and, and get rid of wood the map caters for it by giving you a sawmill again I don't know too many farmers here in the UK that do sawmilling do logging bit of a wonky area there could have done with a bit more smoothing brush yeah, picking up a lot of collectibles as we go around. There's your sawmill. Over here in the corner here, we've got another uh, selling area. Actually, a few more sell points on the map than I thought, actually. There is. Quite a few more. Sheds that you can't open the doors of. Collectibles there. I'm not going to pick up every collectible I see. Be here all day else. Yeah. Map's definitely got you got you covered for sell points if you want sell points. More collectibles. There's another one there. Look, green trailer. This must be the store. Pace dealership. Buying your uh, tractors and vehicles. Service point here at the store as well. Good store. Travel down the map. Now there are, I believe, couple of areas where you can put placeables if you want to do placeables like there's supposedly the area here come down here nope oh, there's a placeable <laughs> now i got to get out of here well let me jump there we go yeah so there's like this big wasteland area here that you can once you've purchased it, you can use for whatever you want to use it for. You could put your own buildings on it, your own placeables. Like if you want to put in the production buildings and things, you're welcome to do that. Big area of all that here on the map. And then there's another one somewhere else on the map. I think it's up here somewhere um, where you can also do that. Might be in that corner, actually. Uh. 
come it's not gonna let me go over the hedge oh you got collisions on your hedges hmm Well, you're not going to be able to squeeze me way through, am I? There we are. Let's see. Let's see if I can get into this area up here. Yes. No! I'm blocked. Oh, get in! Oh, that is a... There's an area... Oh, there's an area here, look. Big brass area. That's a shame though, really. Should have let the players have access to that corner there. For building in some of these corners as well down here. Would have been nice if we could have accessed those. And had just as build areas. I do kind of dislike it when map makers kind of draw artificial barriers and don't fully give you access to all the all the space you know i know why they do it because they want to put in their um their 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 own custom border so it looks more natural than just running up against the edge of the world and that but a little bit frustrating that there is space available that could be used for placeables and we don't have access to it right so yeah so nice interesting little map with obviously a lot of uk vibes now there are a couple of things i have discovered about the map as well and we'll go into the build mode now because most of this stuff if we go over to the demolish you'll notice we can't really demolish a lot of stuff you know at the farm the stuff you know we can't really do anything with you feel like oh that's a bit disappointing you can't you can't knock anything down not remove and replace stuff a lot of the like the, the junk heaps and stuff can't be got rid of however I can get rid of this fuel tank and if I decide to sell this fuel tank, I'm going to get 437,500 bucks for doing so. What? <laughs> I hear people saying, what? And then I can come buy a new one. 10,000 bucks. Might have to use a bit of place anywhere to put it down. But yeah. So. <laughs> Sold a fuel tank, made a load of money. Um, have a bit of a travel. over here towards our area over here oh, okay we can now remove the junk in the barns look now we've cleared out that shed and we've basically got access Off here, some kind of animals. Can sell the sh a horse pen if you want. Um, you've got pigs over here, by the looks of it. That must be for chickens, I'm guessing, over here. You're like chicken pen area. Yeah, if you go around in the go around in the demolish mode and find things to demolish. Just 
which is nice. Again, I would like to see it expanded a little bit more in other maps. That we get the, the ability to remove junk items um, by being able to click on them. Trying to locate the farm now. Starting my house. Yeah, there's another. There's another. Um, this is the cow area, obviously down here. Again, just trying to see if there is a. A telehandler's in there. See if there's any kind of. Trigger point. Uh, oh, there's another fuel tank, which you can remove for another 437,500 bucks. If you remove that, okay, I've got a million pounds now from selling two things <laughs> on my map. Very, very interesting. remember where I live, unfortunately. There's the house. The reason I want to come back to the house, again, if you go into the build mode, you can't remove the house, so your, your house and sleep trigger is fixed. However, come around the back of the house, you'll find there's a dog house, dog kennel. You delete that. You get four hundred and thirty-seven thousand five hundred pounds. Expensive dog. <laughs> There's probably more, but I've not actually been all all around the uh, all around the map yet and discovered all the different things. But nice to know we could remove some of the junk. Be nice if we could have removed a bit more, but that is what it is. So yeah, a nice looking map. Now, obviously, I don't know how it plays because literally I've only done like three headlands on a field. I haven't spent any time playing it, so I don't know if there's any problems with the map functionality-wise. I will say, in as a public disclaimer, that in the past I have had bad luck with um boxes maps and ran into issues on with various things on nearly all of them um which probably got resolved in patches and updates however after i discovered the problems first off it was just like oh can't be dealing with this move on sort of thing um Especially when I was do, doing them on multiplayer servers. If I ran into issues on the multiplayer server, stuff wasn't working properly, then we just changed map. It was that simple. We didn't wait for the map to be updated and patched and fixed or whatever. We we would move on. So, I've played Marwell Manor. I I enjoyed that one. Uh, I, I, I played Lone Oak in FS19. Um, I had mixed fortunes with lone oak I, I did enjoy playing it i didn't enjoy some of the trees and the, the way the map author was placing trees to basically be bushes and foliage and stuff because it made it a nightmare to remove a lot of the stuff when you wanted to make new fields and access routes um did try Chellington. I did try Chellington Valley, but again, we we had some issues with field definitions and stuff not working right, especially with um, the um, precision farming mod in FS19. There was a lot of sort of inconsistencies and incompatibilities with that. So at the time, we 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 on the multiplayer server, on our server, were quite happy to play with precision farming, and we're really liking precision farming. So, because it didn't really work with Chellington Valley at its first release, we ended up changing map. So, I'm just putting that out there. I've had issues with 
Ox's maps in the past, which is one of the reasons why I've not really done any long form Let's Play series on any of his maps. Because I don't want to get, you know, several episodes into a series, find out there's an issue with the map. I've got to wait for an update. And then when the update comes, I've got to start a new save. <laughs> you know, things like that. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you very quickly. Um, yeah, well, I'll take the Fent, actually, because this is a good little tractor to do this. Uh, if I bring up Auto Drive, and I put it into the old Auto Drive edit mode, when I loaded up the map first time with Auto Drive enabled, it asked me if I wanted to load the pre-existing road network. And, of course, you click yes. However... There doesn't appear to be any road network. There are no traffic splines. There are no pre-filled routes. Um, I don't think there's any AI traffic on the map. I've not seen any. Um, so unfortunately, if you're an auto drive user, you're going to have to do the bulk of the courses yourself. And as you can see from these little narrow like one lane roads you're probably gonna be having you're probably not gonna be able to have multiple vehicles driving around at the same sort of times because there's nowhere no real overtaking room so yeah for auto drive players a little bit annoying that you can't get a a basic road network right at the, at the start just by clicking one button when you first load into the map so you're gonna have to come around and um, drive every road yourself and record routes but you know I thought I'd put that point that put that out there people I haven't seen any other mod reviewers or map reviewers of this map tell you about that I mean I assume they're not looking at the map in terms of being compatible with other mods they're just looking at the map in let's have a look at the map whereas I try to look at the map in the eyes of someone who if I'm going to play this map if I'm going to play this map what am I potentially going to run into what problems and certainly auto drive road network is one of the first things I can see is like okay I'm gonna have to spend quite a little while driving around the whole map doing um, routes just a basic road route and connecting everything up so that the vehicles can travel around the place So yeah, that is, woo, I'll just drive into a ditch, that is my look at Hamsden Farm by Oxygen David, a very nice UK themed map, which definitely complements the, the Hout Baileron and Elm Creek maps we've currently got from Giants. Or maybe the Elm Creek Edit by Stevie instead of the Elm Creek map. So Elm Creek Edit by Stevie, Hout Baileron, and now Camsden Farm. Very good choices for maps if you want to um, you want to play. <laughs> um, I didn't mention Earl and Grat because mm, it's an FS19 map. Oh, there's an interesting little glitch. I was able to drive halfway through a gate. <laughs> Which didn't seem to have collision. But yes, if you're the kind of person that likes just doing, you know, crop farming and stuff. And a little bit of animal work. This map is absolutely ideal for that. Because all the fields are, you know, decent size, so decent crop hauls off all the fields. Plenty of grass to mow for animals. Like I say, not a lot of areas for production chains and stuff. 
no production chains and stuff built in from the start. There are a couple of areas you can go and place production chains at. You know, itself. Like I say, there's a couple of plots of land you can buy and then eventually set up your own little um, production chains and buildings from what is available in the store menu. Uh, the map doesn't come with any custom placeables or anything like that. It doesn't have its own, if you like, pack of customised um, sell points and stuff. And just have a quick look in the, you know, if we're going to sheds, there's nothing there extra. Silos, and there's nothing custom. Silo extensions, nothing custom. And petrol tanks and stuff, nothing custom. Pools, nothing custom. Farmhouses, nothing custom. We're into the production factories. I have got some modded ones installed. But yeah, nothing from Oxygen David. Same with the selling points. Don't need the Giants default ones. Same with greenhouses. Orchards generators. There's nothing there apart from base game stuff. Cows. Horses, pigs, sheep. Again, no customised pens. Because the pens are built into the map, you can't remove them. Um, decorations. I don't think there's any customised. No. The note map doesn't come with any, any, any customised bells and whistles you can place down and use for production chains or anything like that you've only got access to the standard giants fair or any other mod you've got from other sources but yes camston farm nice map very nice overview like i say great looking map for doing lots of farming probably not going to appeal to people who are fans of using massive tractors and massive equipment because of the um, the sort of single lane access that you've got to everything, and the fact that you've got to all the fields are accessed by going through little gates, and the fact that you've got hedges around everything that do have collisions, as we've seen. Um, but yeah, for a lot of people, this is going to be a lovely, lovely map to play on. So there you are, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed my first look map look at Camsden Farms. Um, let me know in the comments section if this is a map you're going to be playing. And I will uh, look forward to seeing you all again in the future on another map review or map look video. And obviously, I will look forward to seeing you all every day in my daily Let's Play content. The Meesey Waddy here on Camsden Farm. It's goodbye for now, everyone.